Welcome to One Off Coder. I'm Dr. G. Vang, and today I'll be talking about regression performance measures. I want to simplify the understanding of how regression models are judged. I'll illustrate the simplicity through simulating two variables, x and y. The outline of this talk is to first review simple regression. I don't want to go into the theory of regression. Rather, I want to paint the picture as best as I can of what it is that regression is trying to do. After the refresher on simple regression, I'll dive into the common performance measures used to judge regression models. I'll talk about what is meant by error, and I'll extend that to other types of errors, such as the mean absolute error, the root mean squared error, R squared, and the Bayesian information criterion, or BIC. Simple regression is the attempt to learn a model to predict an output variable y from an input variable x. x is also called the independent variable and y is also called the dependent variable. When you have multiple input variables, people call the regression problem multiple regression as opposed to simple regression. Here is a scatter plot of x and y. x is sampled from a normal distribution with a mean of 2 and standard deviation of 1. y holds a functional relationship with x, meaning y is sampled from a normal distribution whose mean is based on x. The mean of y is 1 plus 2.5 x with a standard deviation of 1. How do we model the relationship between x and y so that we can use x to predict y? For simple regression, our predictive model is based on the line equation. The line equation is written as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is where the line intersects with the y-axis. Changing the slope and intercept, or m and b, we get different lines. Here are three different line equations shown to the right. The first line equation is y equals 1x. The intercept is 0 and omitted. This means that the line intersects with the y-axis at 0. The first line equation is represented by the red line. The second line equation is y equals 1x plus 1.5. It's almost the same as the first, except we add an intercept of 1.5. The blue line represents the second line equation. You can see the blue line is identical to the red one, except it is shifted up by 1.5. The third line equation is y equals 2x and represented by the green line. The intercept is 0. Since the slope is 2, every time x changes by 1, y changes by 2. In this talk, when I say a regression model, I mean a line equation. The model is the line equation. Of course, the relationship between x and y can be modeled using other types of equations, but as a start, regression models are understood most easily using simple line equations. Going back to our scatter plot, we can draw many lines through the data points. There's an infinite number of lines to attempt to draw. We want to find the one particular line such that when drawn, the average distance of the points to the line is minimal. I have three lines here. The red line is drawn above the data points. The blue line is drawn below the data points. The black line is drawn between the data points. Visually speaking, it should be easy to see that the red and blue lines are far away from the data points and the black line stays close to the data points. Regression is trying to learn the optimal line such that when drawn, the average distance of the data points to that line is minimal compared to all other lines. The line is the predictive model and the slope and intercepts are the parameters that regression is trying to learn. Beyond visual inspection or qualitative assessment, how do we quantify the error of the line or model? We have our scatter plot here again with the black dotted line. From every data point, we can draw a vertical line to the black dotted line as shown by the many green lines. The length of these green lines are the errors associated with the model. If we use this model to predict y values from new x values, the model is most likely to always underpredict. We'll assert four models to predict y from x. The first model is 1 plus x. The second model is 1 plus 2x. The third model is 1 plus 2.5x. The fourth model is 1 plus 3x. We already know the truth about x and y. When we use these models to make predictions, we call these predictions y hat. As there are four models, there are four y hats. This table shows the ground truth y and the y hats predicted by the four different models, y1 hat, y2 hat, y3 hat, and y4 hat. With the true and predicted y values, we can start to talk about quantifying the errors of a model and thereby its performance. The error is the difference between the true y and the predicted y. Since we have many of these pairs, we can average over the differences. The average error is simply the average of the differences between y and y hat. In the previous slide, I show y and y hats for each of the four asserted models. 
In this slide, I show the differences between y and y hat for each model. The row denoted sum is the sum of the errors. The row AE is the average error. Using AE, model 4 has the error that is closest to 0. Negative 0 0.5 is closer to 0 than all other values. Typically, the AE is not used to judge the performance of regression models. The reason being is that averaging over the differences might result in an AE of 0 due to the positive and negative values. An AE of 0 might mislead one to expect an error of 0 when there are really prediction errors in the models. However, the AE is useful as a first step to understanding error measurements, as many performance measures play on the differences between Y and Y hat. The average error is faulty because averaging over positive and negative values might result in zero. Instead, if we look at the absolute value of the differences between y and y hat, averaging over positive values only will not suffer from the canceling effect of positive and negative values. The mean absolute error, or MAE, is the average of the absolute values of the differences between y and y hat. The best model according to MAE is model 3. Root mean square error, or RMSE, treats the difference between y and y hat a little different. Instead of considering the absolute value of the difference, RMSE takes the square difference. Whatever the difference is between y and y hat, RMSE raises that to the power of 2. By squaring the difference, the error stays positive and the error is exaggerated. The exaggerated difference punishes models that make predictions further from the truth. The square difference can be summed and then divided by the total number of observations to get the average square difference. However, the unit of the error is not aligned with the unit of y due to the squaring operation. To get the error back into the unit in which y is in, we have to take the square root of the average square difference. According to RMSE, Model 3 has the lowest error or best performance. Between MAE and RMSE, if you have reason to believe that errors are orders of magnitude worse moving away from the truth, then use RMSE. For example, if you have an error of 2 and 3, and an error of 3 is almost as bad as an error of 2, then use MAE. But if you have an error of 2 and 3, and an error of 3 is some order of magnitude worse than 2, let's say over 2 times worse, then use RMSE. Conceptually, R squared or the coefficient of determination is comparing two models, the null model and the alternative model. The null model always predicts Y with the average value of Y, Y bar. The alternative model predicts Y with X, or in this case, a line equation. The error associated with the null model is the sum of square difference between y and y bar. This error is called the total sum of square difference denoted by SST. The error associated with the alternative model is the sum of square difference between y and y hat. This error is called the residual sum of square difference denoted by SSR. Taking the ratio of SSR to SST and subtracting that from 1, we get the R squared value. The higher the R squared value, the better the model is at explaining the variance of Y. Typically, you should not get a negative R squared value, but when you do, the interpretation is that the alternative model does a worse job than the null one at explaining the variance of Y. According to R squared, Model 3 performs the best. Another way to judge regression models is with the Bayesian Information Criterion, or BIC. BIC is more useful for multiple regression problems, as it will derive a score that balances the trade-off between prediction accuracy and model parsimony. It could be that a very complicated model predicts very well, but we should penalize the model for its complexity based on Occam's razor, which favors the simplest explanation. BIC is computed as k times a natural log of n minus 2 times a natural log of the likelihood of the model. k is the number of independent variables. N is the number of observations. L hat is the likelihood of the model. L hat has a seemingly complicated formula, but it is proportional to the residual sum of square difference. According to BIC, models 3 and 4 are the best performing ones. For BIC, a lower score is better. Thanks for watching. I hope your understanding of judging regression models has improved. If you want to get specialized training in statistics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, or data science, please visit our website at https oneoffcoder.com and contact us. If you need the code to see the worked out examples, please feel free to contact us. Happy learning and happy coding.